Hello. I feel like I should be doing a voice, like a welcome sort of creepy thing, but it's the afternoon here and it's sunny, so I don't know how well that would work. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna start playing because I want to. So we're gonna start. Oh, that's right, it uses a space bar. Dear reader, allow me to introduce you to my book. Though it might at first appear like many books you've come across, it is far from ordinary. You may therefore have some misunderstandings about its nature. The story that awaits you has not been fully told. In fact, its conclusion is not yet known, even to myself. It is in that way that my book is special. It is in that way that you are special. Without you, there is no story. <laughs> Broke the immersion there. Chapter 1 Normal isn't what it used to be. Okay, so this is what was in the demo, so I've played this before, but we'll do it again. This is a story about change. Nestled in a shallow valley is the town of Beacon Pines. Far from the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, a young boy walks alone at dawn. Oh, I love this art style so much. His name is Luca Van Horn, and like you, dear reader, he's here for a reason. Okay, just gonna make sure that y'all can hear. There. Okay, here we go. Hey, Dad. How are things going? Today's the first day of summer vacation. I start middle school next year, I guess. Oh God, can I turn off that? Ooh. I was six years old when you died, and it's been six years now. From here on out, you'll have been gone longer than you were here. Feels like that should mean something. Mom always said that this tree was your favorite spot in the world. Should I move this closer? Me too. Okay, good. I wanted to press escape, but I didn't want to break the game. Um, okay, so let's have a look here at audio. Okay, so there's no voiceover volume. I don't really care about that. I just specifically would like to turn off the... Um... Sure, it's in video. Nope. That's fine. What is in social? Ah. Guess I'll just have to deal with it. And if I get too annoyed, I'll just turn off the sound or something. Hey, Luca. I knew I'd find you here. Rolo was Luca's closest friend. He possessed many fine qualities, but subtlety was not one of them. Well... After I banged on your door till your gran answered. And after I checked the pond, I just remembered that I was A, meant to be doing voices, and B, that these are children. And climbed up to the treehouse. Then I knew I'd find you here. Rolo finally noticed the tears welling in his friend's eyes and the flowers on the grave. Oh, yeah, right. You and your mom always did this on your dad's birthday. Yeah. I didn't know if you were gonna keep doing it now that your mom's gone too. She's not gone. She's just missing. Sorry, I meant to say since she went missing. She's gonna come back, Rolo. Of course she is. Okay, dad. See you next time. I think I'm ready to get out of here. Sure, lead the way. I'm trying to remember what voices I did specifically in doing the demo, but that was so long ago. Yay! Hold on. Ah! Those 
is so cute. I'm gonna die. It's fine. Yes, this is a charm. Wonderful. I had a good feeling about you from the moment you opened my book. That charm is a very special thing. Very special indeed. Keep hold of it for now. Its purpose will reveal itself soon enough. Must run through all dandelions. Did they respawn? They do not. Hi! Hope you're doing well, Danielle. Uh, I've just started Beacon Pines. I've been excited for this game for a very long time, and now it's here! And I'm obsessed with the art style. Oh yeah, I almost forgot! The whole reason I was looking for you. I was wondering if you'd ever get to that. I found the perfect way to start our summer! How's that? Rolla looked to the side, suspiciously. Not here. <laughs> that was way too deep. They might be watching. They who? Shh, not so loud. We need to do this in a secure location. Don't tempt me. I will. <laughs> Mission control. Alright, I just have to tell Gran and then we can head out. What are you gonna tell her? I don't know, I'll think of something. If it's all the same to you, I'll meet you at the welcome sign. Your grand still kind of wigs me out. I don't do well with new people. She moved in like half a year ago. Just meet me at the sign when you're done. See yourself, I won't be long. Tell grand before heading out with Rolo. No, I need the quests on the board where I can see them at all times. Okay. Oh, E is jump, I guess. Wait, what does Q do? Nothing. Dear reader, forgive me for this interlude. Remember the charm you found in the dandelion patch? There are more of those special charms to discover throughout Beacon Pines. They've been known to reveal themselves to those who are willing. Some of them can be found in this very house. I did this during the demo and I'm gonna do it again. I'm just gonna look at absolutely everything. A uh, quick recap if you're just tuning in, this is our main character, whose name I have already forgotten. His friend is named Rolo though, I remember that one. Uh, and he currently lives with his grandma because his dad died when he was six and then his mom went missing about half a year ago. Since Gran had moved in, the house was more peaceful, more orderly, and more covered in flowery fabric. I feel really bad, what's his name? One of his father's old stethoscopes. Luca! Luca had spent countless hours in listening to anything and everything with it. Not for years, though. Mood. Yay! I'll let the game sh <laughs> show you what the charms are for. That's so cute. Can I get a fireball? Gran had already lit the fire. She kept a warm house, as if by grandmotherly obligation. Is that a grandmotherly obligation? I will do my best not to make family jokes in this. But we'll see nonetheless. Okay, let's go upstairs. I know she's in the backyard, but I don't care. Ah. Luca paused at his parents' bedroom door. He just wasn't ready to go in yet. What's over here? I think there's a bathroom here. Yes. Nope, that's his room. Or their room, I guess. Luca tossed on his favorite old sweater. Even though it was the first day of summer, chills still hung in the air. Grand's moving in meant that most of Luca's things had been crammed into that corner. Luca was somewhat annoyed by the situation. No, can't write on things. Wait, I can jump. Can I stand on the- no. Gran's bed was undisturbed. Luca didn't mind that she had a habit of falling asleep in front of the fireplace. It meant that he could read late into the night. Is there anything else I can be really nosy at? Nope. Okay. 
Can I can I jump on the bed or is it just up? Oh wait, it's just up. All right, to the bathroom. Wait, can I look at these pictures? I assume they're of the family. Graham had commandeered the upstairs closet when she moved in. Some things need shelter from a young boy's mischief, she said. Interesting. Why didn't she go live in the closet? I guess probably the closet isn't very big, is it? Just some dusty knickknacks, but apparently not the knickknacks or whatever else she hides in the closet. The only piece of furniture Gran had bought, brought when she moved in was an old hutch. Didn't know those were called a hutch. A pair of dull scissors, a broken can opener, a mostly empty bottle of glue, and some loose string. An array of prepared meals crowded the refrigerator. Each labeled with a day of the week. Okay, I think we've looked at everything we can. Oh my, this is quite exciting. I'm now certain ow, that you are the one I've been waiting for all these years. You'll recall I was a bit coy regarding the use of charms earlier. Excuse me, I tend to have a flair for the dramatic. You're about to encounter your first turning point. There are certain times in this tale when everything hinges on a single word. Step forth, dear reader. This is so pretty. Wait, can I look at the gardening tools? A sturdy old wheelbarrow. Young Luca would spend hours hiding in the bushes, waiting for a chance to jump out and startle his mother. She always enjoyed humoring him by feigning terror. Do, 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 do. Oh, I gotta do an old lady voice. A beginner's guide to gardening laid open on the bench. Does she really need a beginner's guide? This looks beautiful. Okay. Hey, Gran. I'm gonna go hang with Rolo for the day. See you later. Hold up now. Where are you and Rolo headed exactly? Uh, nowhere special. The less Gran knew, the better for everyone involved. We were just gonna go for the day. So clearly the correct answer is chill, but you can go back and change if you want to see the other reactions and whatnot. Should have said we were just gonna go ponder for the day. We were just gonna go chill for the day. The best lies are always built on truth. You boys are always in a hurry to do nothing. We stick to what we're good at. Well, make sure you're done chilling in time for supper. Easy. Impressive. You've managed to navigate your first turning point without too much of a mess. That is the power of charms. A single word can change everything. I think it's time to introduce you to the Chronicle. The Chronicle is a record of the decisions you've made. You can see the turning point which has been revealed. At any time, you can use the Chronicle to go back and invoke different charms, creating new branches. Luckily for us, this is the one and only turning point where the charms won't dramatically alter fate. It's the perfect opportunity to experience, experiment with rewriting things. We were just gonna go... Hide for the day. We were just gonna go hide for the day. Hide? Traditionally, when one is trying to hide something, they avoid literally using the word hide. Yeah, I guess some Ro Rolo beat some other kids that we could beat him at hide and seek. Aren't you a little old for that? It's not like there's much else to do around here. Well, make sure you boys are done playing your little game in time for supper. All's well that ends well. Oh my god, it's so nice. Oh, and Luca. You and Rolo stay out of trouble. 
I know, I know. Get into trouble and roll up. I mean, as you wish. Do, do, do. Can I jump on the stump? No. Oh, for sure. Oh god, it's so pretty. I just want to, like, stare at it. Come on, come on! Woo! Dang it, Rolo. For a town that saw few visitors, the welcome was perhaps more grand than necessary. You know the drill. Don't let anyone discover our secret path. Can you just moonwalk? Chapter 2 Welcome to Beacon Pines For many years, this valley had been a small mining outpost. It wasn't until Sharper Valentine built his fertilizer company that Beacon Pines was established. Over the next 30 years, the town had grown and prospered, until the foul harvest and his sudden death. In the six years since, everyone was simply trying to get by. Yes, indeed, this is a town about uh, big business greed and destroying the environment, told through adorable animals. Hi, Mr. Kerr. Hey there, pal. William Kerr was the CEO of Perennial Harvest Co. Oh, because he's a Kerr bad guy. He had become a fixture around town over the past few years. After the falling of Valentine Fertilizer, the town was hungry to welcome a new source of employment. Excited for the big festival? Um, sure. Come on now, when I was your age, there was nothing more exciting than a town festival. The food, the music, the dancing. Sounds pretty alright. You're gosh dang right it is. Oh, he's a hyena as well, isn't he? I'm looking forward to letting off some steam myself. Make sure to invite all your little friends. I couldn't keep Rolo away if I tried. Excellent. Sorry, Luca, I've got to get back to the proverbial grindstone. Our harvest awaits and all that. Ho oh, now. Left side's a little low. Sorry, young Mr. Van Horn. Can't talk now. Very busy with preparations. Mayor Augustus Valentine was not busy. Oh, sorry, Gus. How many times do I... It's Mayor Valen... <sighs> Flustered, Gus instinctively loosened his tie. Keep up the good work. I must briefly attend to a concerned citizen. Huh? It's nothing. Keep at it. Alright, what can the Mayor of Beacon Pines do for you today? Uh, just saying hi, I guess. Well... Good day to you too, young Mr. Van Horn. Hey, Mr. Sinclair. Mr. Sinclair continued snoring and lifted one eyelid just enough to see who it was, a tactic he often used to avoid undesirable conversation. Yoo-hoo, Mr. Sinclair! Ah. Don't you see him sleeping, boy? How's it happening today? Crummy as always. You have a perfectly nice view from here. The perennial harvest put that monstrosity of a building in the way. Why don't you just move your chair a bit? Why should I be the one that moves? If it's a showdown they want, I ain't gonna be the one who blinks. Come on, Andy, grab his wallet. I'm sorry, Iggy, I can't. Do it or we pound ya. Yup. Oh, my favorite character. Yeah, but my mom said, yeah, but, yeah, but, if I had a nickel for every yeah, but, I'd be the freaking king of nickels. Ain't that right, Tish? Yup. Hmm. 
Mr. Van Horn, do you have a moment? It's just Luca. Golly, I'm sorry. It's my first week of perennial harvest. He pulled the pen from the pocket of his sweater vest and began frantically to jot something down on a clipboard. Wonderful, it won't happen again. If we're going to be on a first name basis, then you can call me Pete. Uh, nice to meet you, Pete. Sorry, what are you writing? Oh, just documenting. Gosh, it's exciting to be a part of something so darn special. You know, it's not just about new fountains and phone booths. We're gonna change the world. And it all starts here, in Beacon Pines. Isn't that amazing? Uh-huh. Anyway, I'd better get... Oh, that reminds me. We'd love to hear your thoughts. My thoughts? You bet. We're gonna change this town. We need to get every detail right. That sounds intense. Ha ha ha. Changing the world is intense. So what do you say? Could you answer a few questions? Uh, I guess if it's quick? No, 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 Sarge. Hi. Wonderful. Open to answering a few quick questions. One down. See, it's not that hard, is it? Okay, okay, can you give him the rest of this food? Yeah. We're going already. Question two. What is something you love about Beacon Pines? Yeah, okay. that was a good time. Never really thought about it before. Perfect! It's the only place I've lived. See, that wasn't so painful. Pete stopped scribbling and glanced up from the clipboard. Was it? Uh, I guess not. Huzzah! Our first three questions answered in record time. Are you literally writing down everything? Thank you so much for your time. I need to process these answers. I can't do a good customer service voice as a dude. We can save the rest of your thoughts for later. Okay. Our harvest awaits! Can I go inside there? No. Oh wait, Rolo's waiting up at the treehouse. No, I want to explore everything. Not fair. Sorry. <laughs> Old Pickler's Pond. Mission Control. Authorized personnel only. Hey, Jetson. Is the line playing any tunes today? No bats this morning, I'm afraid. Come to think of it, I can't remember the last time I reeled one in. But hey, it was never about the catch. This is where I come to think. Yeah, that's what my dad used to do here. That reminds me. If you ever want his chair back, I've taken to stand in recently. It keeps me from falling asleep at the reel. If you don't mind, I think it should stay. Not at all. An empty chair makes for a great listener. That water is very green. Whenever Luca saw his dad's chair by the pond, it reminded him of the days they'd pack up a couple of sandwiches and fish until sundown. Ooh, flashback! Go and pick out your bait from the tackle box, buckaroo. Luca opened the tackle box and picked the perfect bait. I want to tickle his dad. Oh, no. Good for skimming the surface. Alright, well, we'll see what this does. I can always go back. Give it a good cast now. Even this game has a fishing sim. <laughs> that just reminds me of my, uh, not my, sorry. The the sound TikTok that's those lyrics, but it's like to a Muppet sound or to the sound of the Muppets theme. Da, 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 da. <laughs> All my friends are dead and gone. <laughs> I don't remember what he said. I think you have to hold it for a little bit or something will lose interest. Okay, now we go back. This time we'll take junk. A shoestring to the hook. These are both 
terrible options. It's so funny. Oh god, they actually need me to do this fishing mechanics. I don't, I, I don't, this is not... Don't make me do a fishing mechanic in this game. Easy there, buckaroo. You don't know your own strength. And I have to figure out the strength on the freaking On the space bar? Cool. Well, I'll be switched. It's your old rubber ducky. You were just a true ball of fur when you lost that. Cried for days. Told you it'd turn up. <laughs> That's very sweet. I was kidding when I said this was a fishing sim. I didn't expect it to have mechanics and make me do things that I'm not good at, which is fishing sims. <laughs> Where do you think the other one is? Hard to say. Sometimes things drift away. That's not fair. No, it's not. Well, wherever it is, I hope that the other boot at least has a sock to keep it company. Exactly. I don't think there's anything else. Okay, so I got those both. How do I... Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. No, I don't want to bait anything. wanted to look at those. Yeah, yeah. Looks like we could use some new bait. Why don't you say we head out and find some more? I think that's what it said. Yes. Uh, I mean, I'm saying yes, but I don't... Do you want me to leave the fishing hole? Okay. Keep out. The boys had a good thing going. As long as they kept old Jeff happy, they had an endless source of precious materials to add to the treehouse. They have a flag. <laughs> I wish I had a treehouse. That looks very fun. Ah. Sorry, but I'm trying to explore things and be annoying. Okay, what's this top secret plan to start our summer? So, you know the abandoned warehouse by my place? The old Valentine building? Yeah, well, it isn't abandoned. What makes you think that? Get this. Last night it was glowing. Glowing? Are you sure? Kinda. That place has been empty since... Since the fall harvest. Yeah. Who would even want to poke around that place? We would, Rolo. We would. Wait, 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 wait. It's just a busted old warehouse. I just meant we could do some research at the library. You want to actually go to the warehouse? What do you expect to find? Answers. My mom's out there somewhere, and it seems like everyone wants to pretend that she's gone for good. You don't have to come, Rolo, if you don't want to. Luca, remember that time I sort of accidentally burned down the chicken coop? And you jumped in and said it was your fault before my pa throttled me? This is a fl flame and chicken coop sort of deal. I've got your back. Thanks, Rolo. Now that I think about it, poking around a decrepit fertilizer warehouse is exactly how I wanted to spend the first day of summer. Let's go! <laughs> 
Luca's winter coat, decommissioned for the summer. With the cold holding out longer than usual, he reconsidered its usefulness. Did I get the item? On certain nights, when the clouds were just right, the boys could tune into strange patterns of static. Rolo thinks it's aliens. He always thinks it's aliens. Ooh, is that a rocket? After Luca's father had passed, Rolo became obsessed with them building their own Hank Atomic Starscraper. It was some time before Re Luca realized it was Rolo's way of keeping him occupied. My poor heart. It's so early on, and yet. And yet. God, chill. I also need to keep an eye on the time, because if I'm late for work, that would be real bad. Do, do, do. I'm just catching my breath a bit. Go on, I'll catch up. Ah. Holden Wilder ran the local paper of record, the Beacon Beacon. Hey, Mr. Wilder. Morning, Luca. What's the day have in store for you? I was wondering if you heard any news about... News? The Beacon Beacon knows the news it needs knowing. I'll say that one five times fast. Any news about the old fertilizer warehouse? Nope. Oh. Rollo thought he saw some lights there last night. Hmm. Rollo ought to be careful poking around that part of town. The winds of change are blowing and change is a dangerous animal. Can I change clothes? Is that what that means? I hope so. Luca could see the morning regulars nestled in their booths at the early bean. Hey, Miss Nelson. Morning, Luca. Any big plans for the summer? Not really. Or anything about the old fertilizer warehouse? Any strange happenings? Can't say I have. Either way, a dusty old warehouse is no place for a young boy. You be safe now. Miss Hatch could often be found near the fountain, too absorbed in a book to be distracted. The two wandered down the wooded path, unaware of the danger ahead. Oh! Oh, this is getting good. I guess she'll be our nice foreshadow foreshadower. Um, Piper? Oh, hey Luca, what's up? You know it's summer break, right? Of course. And it's like, the morning? Correct. And you're studying? Like they say, the early bird gets the proper education required for a successful and fulfilling career later in life. Mm-hmm. Hey, Zario. Hi, Luca. Could you please tell this lazy butt to help out in the cafe? Um, Louis Zario would like you. Luca, let me give you a little gem of advice. If you never do what you don't love, then you'll never work a day in your life. Wow. You're really setting the kid up for success. I bet they're dating. Just, I, I get the vibes. Dating or co-workers who have a lot of tension and should be dating. Hey Bert. Hi Luca. I'm doing some fact checking for the town history exhibit. Look kid, I'm just here to put up the lights. But did you know... Where the town was founded, there was only seven citizens, and they all worked for a mining company, and there was only one dirt road leading to town, and- There still is only one road leading to town. Alright. Hey, Griffin. How's the ice cream gig going? Not great. It's still pretty cold out, and I'm in the business of selling cold. I'm sure things will warm up soon. Mr. Tolliver is not at his grocery stand? He's prepping for the festival, I guess. Gotcha. <laughs> the achievement is play that funky music. <laughs> I 
Maybe this new chair isn't as good as I thought. My behind is quite sore. Of course. Hey, Dawn. Sorry to wake ya. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. No problem. Comes with the job. Dawn had dreams of becoming a big-time reporter. At night, she searched for the story that could be her big break. By day, she hawked papers at the newsstand. What's up? Rolo said he saw something strange going on at the warehouse. Know anything about that? Mm, you might say I've heard some things. I'm working on a story about it right now. So what's going on? Can't say quite yet. This squeaking is making me want to be like, I still need to follow up on a few leads. Keep me in the loop, okay? Sure thing. Things seem to be quiet in town today. Yep, everyone's preparing for the festival. Should be back to normal tomorrow. Catch you then? Catch you then. Oh, and Luca? I'm really sorry I haven't been able to find out anything about your mom yet. I'm just grateful that you tried. I'm still keeping my ears up. Okay, I have to get my old chair. This is... Oh my god, okay. I thought this would be more comfortable um, to get an office chair because gamer chairs can be quite gimmicky. Um, and sometimes I would get like pain in my hips from my old one, but that one is much worse. And I think part of my problem might have just been how I was sitting at the desk before. Ow! <laughs> he just wants her to spend time with people or something. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't follow the romantic lives of two animals that we just met, I suppose. Can I get- what is catch- oh. <sighs> Better. Okay, guess I know what I'm returning. <laughs> um, last chance diner. Guess Miss Fratelli is getting ready for the festival. Last Chance Diner. Luca, just the fellow I was looking for. Hey Roxy, what's up? All right, rendezvous with Roxy. This is an important turning point. The first time where your charms will change the course of fate. And currently we only have one suitable charm at our disposal. Have no fear, we can always return later using the Chronicle, once we find more charms. Well, now I'm just rambling. Where were we? Yeah, I was really hoping that that one would work, but I guess Amazon lies, which is really not surprising at all. But I put the chair together myself. Oh well, at least this chair is currently making me feel a bit better. Where were we? Have you seen my blockhead brother today? He skipped out before breakfast. Well, not really, no. Can't say I have. Can't say or won't say. Roxy, would I lie to you? Look away, I almost forgot to tell you. Roxy might be lurking around here. This is one of her favorite places to stand around and be useless. Frollo? So we need to make sure she doesn't spot us. Frollo? Why are you doing that turning thing with your body? What, you're not scared, are you? She's harmless. And a chump. And she's right around that corner, isn't she? <laughs> Don't mind me, just over here lurking. Uselessly. Oh, hey, sis. Nice weather we're having, eh? I couldn't help but notice you snuck out this morning before breakfast. Wasn't hungry. Also couldn't help but notice your morning chores were left unchored. Roxy, I'm gonna level with you. I'm sick and tired of digging up carrots. We all gotta pick up the slack since the foul harvest. Almost every carrot I dig up is rotten. And the rest look like they were hit with Hank Atomic Shrink Array. All the more reason to keep on digging. There's gotta be more to life than Pewty Carrots. Look, Roxy, Luca and I have places to be, so if you don't mind. Oh, I do mind. I'm not gonna catch hell again because of you. 
So either you march yourself back and harvest those crops, or I haul you home myself. Rolo froze as Roxy took a step toward him, cracking her knuckles. Luca knew he had one chance to save his friend from being dragged home. In the past, he found that the best way to deal with Roxy was to be a little ch- <laughs> I remember what the right one for this is, and it's quite funny. Come on, Roxy, it's the first day of summer, the sun's shining, we just want to take it easy. Let's leave tomorrow's problems for tomorrow. That's great and all, but Rolo's problems have a way of becoming my problems. And Pa always says, tomorrow's work is best left for yesterday. March, you big oaf. Aw, oh, rats. I expect a full report about the Valentine place. A FULL REPORT! So, Fitz, what are you up to this lovely day? Nope. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> nice. Um, okay, then we go this way. Sharper Valentine, founder of Beacon Pines. Never underestimate what a great man can do given time. A bit much, if you ask me. <laughs> hey, Solomon. Apologies, no time for chit chat. Bye, Solomon. Jeff's hardware store closed down about a year ago. The effects of the fall harvest stretched wide. Yeah, one would think so. But then his his excuse of let's leave tomorrow's problems for tomorrow didn't make sense either when he hadn't done the work that should have been done today already, which would make it today's problem. I don't know. When there are no crops in the field, tractors don't need fixing. Ooh, library. Looks like the library hasn't opened yet. I'll check back later. It's nice that they have a library. Honestly, with a town like this, I wouldn't be sure. Oh god, okay. Luca, my boy, hold up a tick. Oh, hey, Mr. Nuncreed. I was just on my way to... I just sold the last jar your grandmother's preserves. I can't decide if everyone in this town is southern or just some people, but this is the best deep voice I can do. Can't stock the shelves fast enough, turns out. Hey, that's great, but I'm actually... I guess Juniper will just have to swing by with more of her lovely jam. Uh-huh. Well, don't let this old man slow you down. You just remind her that she still owes me that dance. I promise Gran regretted the second it was made. Will do! She's a fine woman, that Juniper. Yeah, she's pretty cool, I guess. A real fine woman. Uh, gotta go. Sweeter than any jam on earth. The phone booth was brand new, part of Perennial Harvest Beacon Pines Reborn Initiative. It didn't see much use. Oh, hey, Luca. Hey, Joey. How's the bug hunt going? Not great. Bugs have been shy this week. Bugs get shy? Oh, sure. Bugs aren't that different from people. Sometimes they just want to be left alone. If you're going into weep wood, just be careful where you step. No bug crunching. Got it. What is over here? Luca peeked up at the beehive. It appeared to be deserted. That's strange. Well, if it weren't deserted, you would have just gotten a face full of bees. After the foul harvest destroyed their wealth and reputation, the Valentines shuttered off their estate from the rest of town. Can I break in? The Valentine mansion loomed over every other building in town, both figuratively and literally. Please? Ha 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 ha. This is new. I didn't see any of this before. Come on, I don't even get information of whose house this is. 
No? Okay. Maybe it's not supposed to be for players like me who go literally everywhere else except for the place they're meant to go. Because nosy. The path led into a small hollow at the edge of Weep Wood. Okay, no turning back now. Caution, electrified fence. Is that sign new? The fence thrummed with a gentle electric buzz. Okay, so what would Rolo do if he was here? Luca often asked himself what Rolo would do so that he could rule out that option. I'm definitely not touching that thing. Probably a good, probably a good idea there. Flowers. Oh, that's right. Wait, can I go back here? Yes. Okay, we'll come back to that. Do, do, do. As sparks flew from the fence, the light atop the section shut off. Two bulbs remained. Will this work? Apparently, yes. That's two. One more to go. The fence is buzzing gave way to silence. Okay, moment of truth. Oh. Every kid in town knew the old Valentine Fertilizer Building. Long abandoned, the warehouse once served as the industrial heart of Beacon Pines. Now it stood only as a reminder of things left behind. The dormant building showed strange signs of life. Okay, so Rolla wasn't exaggerating for once. What's going on here? There is only one way to find out. Wow, that smells awful. Too bad Rolo's not here. He'd have no problem poking around in there. The hose emitted a subtle sound. It was actively draining some kind of liquid. The water looked almost diseased. It flowed slowly into the woods. All right, let's try not to touch that. Locked. Luca thought he heard faint sounds coming from the other side of the door. He pressed his ear against the cold metal to hear better. A zipper? Footsteps? The sound of footsteps grew louder. Hello? Shit. So, I want to know if that's a human or just an animal in a hazmat suit that makes it look bigger. The heavy steel door knocked Luca to the ground. Disoriented, he looked up to see an imposing figure silhouetted in a green glow. It lunged toward him. He tried to scramble away but felt a gloved hand latch onto his ankle. Luca watched his fingernails leave trails in the dirt as the hand slowly dragged him back through the door. Into the lab. Into the green light. This is a story about change. Oh, you too? We had like tornado warnings uh, here. Actually, all the sirens were going off, but now it's calmed down. It was far from the sort of change Luca had imagined for himself. But change is, after all, a dangerous animal. The end. Probably should have warned you about this. There are many paths that our story can take. Most will end in tragedy, but don't let that discourage you. We'll find the ending that this story deserves. I just know it. From here on out, a charm will have a check mark when it's been used to its full potential at a given turning point. Now, let's try something different. This is a story about change. It was far from the sort of change Luca imagined for himself, but- oh. Was I supposed to select? Probably. Oh, thank you. Yeah, my watch was actually just buzzing. I'm probably gonna go... for... Ah. <laughs> I'm gonna give an example of how the charms work, and then I might drop soon. Okay, so in the past, the best way to deal with Roxy was to be a little shit. Which is very funny.
Make a break for it. What have you done? Ah! Did that little shit just kick me? Run all you want, little twerps. You gotta come home eventually. Sorry. So see, we've already had a change here. Sorry about that. Rolo can get overexcited sometimes. Solomon Valentine, current ward of and future successor to the Valentine Fortune, huffed as he brushed off his pants. A town of complete and utter fools. One wonders if it's worth taking anything seriously here. Uh, either way, I'm sorry. No matter. How are you doing? Me? Yes, with all that business about your mother and whatnot. Uh, I'm getting by. Still no word from her at all? No. That is truly a shame. <laughs> your grandmother has taken residence to keep house. Yeah. And how is that going? We mostly stay out of each other's way. You make it sound like she's rarely at home. It's not like that. She just has a lot to do. Hmm. She's still settling in and trying to figure out how to make ends meet. Indeed. Well, count your blessings. It's better to have a caretaker who's rarely around in lieu of one who tries to compensate by smothering you with attention. Ah, uh, yes, I am sad, rich boy. That doesn't sound so bad. Trust me when I say it's best to rely on yourself. Family has a way of creating more problems than they solve. Is he a child or... Okay, he is a child, I think. Oh, well. Solomon. Solomon trifled a gesture toward the approaching heiress Valentine. Speak of the devil. Do not wander off like that. I'm much too busy to be looking all over for you. Apologies, heiress. I was just taking a stroll through town. Strolls are for commoners. You're a valentine now. I want you to be present for the construction of the History Museum. The future of this town relies on its abilities to remember our family's great past. Of course. Not doing that again. Bye. Damn it. Luca, my boy. Hold up a tick. Uh, sorry, Mr. Nurnun Creek. Kind of in a hurry right now. Oh, thank God. <sighs> Boy's got too much of his father in him. I win! Ugh. I am the champion! We were racing. Luke Skywalker? Probably. Did the, did the world get longer? Like anything ever changes around here. It seemed longer. You're just lightheaded from the run. You really need to pace yourself better next time. Now I'm getting lightheaded from doing the panting. <laughs> Not sure why I'd take advice from the second place. Has that sign always been there? Wait, what? Caution, electrified fence. No, that's definitely new. Creepy. How are we gonna get around an electrified fence? Don't worry, I got this. Why did you do that? Pa always says you can figure out what the plan was when you're done. Great, what now? Well, I did my part and established that touching the fence is bad. I'm sure you can handle it from here. I'll supervise. From a safe distance. Whoa, you're a genius. I know. I think that did it. Luca. <laughs> oh yeah, he's very safety conscious, Rolo is. You never fail to impress. As the glowing windows of the old warehouse came into view, Rolo began to bounce excitedly. Check it out! Dang, Rolo, you weren't exaggerating for once. 
Was there any ever any doubt? This definitely needs investigating. Good thing two ace detectives are on the case. This is bizarre. This is awesome! Let's get ready to rumble. Did you feel that? What, the excitement in the air? You bet your butt I did. Check out this puddle! That's not normal. And this hose! Oh man, the door's locked. Try harder! Don't encourage him! No dice, it won't budge. Oh well. This dumpster's new, right? I bet it's got stuff in it. I can't really see what's in here. Who did all of this? My nose is itching. I think I smell some treasure. He's like a cat, right? I did not know cats had treasure hunting sense. Are you sure that isn't the hazardous waste? Just help me get in. Rollo. It would be my honor to throw you in the trash. Come on, Lady Luck! So, what's in there? Let's see. There's a squishy bag of squish. Wow. A good inch of stagnant sludge. Your natural habitat. Wait, hold a phone! Hold two phones! Check out these bad boys. Are those walkie-talkies? Just like Hank Atomic Communicators. Do these actually work? Ground Command to Hank Atomic. Hank, do you read me? This is Hank Atomic Ground Command. You're coming in 5x5. Five five. How, um... How are your vital readouts, Hank? It's getting a little stuffy in here. Questing assistance for evac. Help is on the way. What was that? Someone's coming, give me your hand. I'm trying, my hands are covered in squish. Scoot over, I'm coming in. I mean, that could be a person, it could also be a pig. Uh, tell me you saw that? Dude, I don't know what I saw. He's coming back, get down. Is that a body? The boy sat petrified under the weight of the bag. Oh god, tell me that's not what I think it is. Luca, do you know what separates run-of-the-mill detectives from ace detectives? A ridiculous hat? I didn't look, that's a good point. When the chips are down, ace detectives dig deeper for clues. Rollo felt around at the large sack which burdened them. Aha! He snapped off a tag from just within a small zipper opening in the bag. It's some sort of badge or something. What's it say? Rollo held the badge up to a faint shaft of light within the dumpster. Dr. Prescott, Deep Engineering. It's a name tag. Who would throw away a bag full of slimy old name tags? I think it's just one name tag and a bag full of something else. Okay, okay, okay. I think we should make a break for it. Stay calm, there's no time to panic. I'm not panicking! You're panicking! Rollo, calm down. You don't have to squeeze my hand so hard. Dude, I am not holding your hand. Quit messing around. What other slime-covered hand would be in here? Will that give me a charm that says hand and I can give people a hand? Right, we've clearly established that I'm faster than you, so I'll go first. Why not go together? Flaming chicken coop, Luca. I'll make sure the coast is clear. After I go, count to 100. If you hear me yell, run. If you don't hear me yell, run. Actually, either way, haul ass. Roll, I'll give you credit. We sure found an eventful way to start our summer. It's what I do. Well, here goes nothing. Luca sat in the dark, tracking the sound of Rolo's footsteps as he ran. One, two, three. He pressed his car to the dumpster wall, str 
No, he's he presses his ear to the dumpster wall, straining to hear Rolo's footsteps as they faded away. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. He tried not to think about the contents of the dumpster as he counted. Thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven. The thick stench made it hard to breathe. Screw it, that's long enough. Luca carefully lifted the lid and peered out. Nothing. No sign of Rolo, no sign of the man in the yellow suit. Time to haul ass. Luca clambered from the dumpster, stumbling to his knees. He was up like a shot and running, sprinting toward home as fast as he could. Vegan pines flew by, blurred by the tears that welled up in his eyes. He wouldn't remember getting home at all that night. Throwing his front door open, storming up the stairs to his room and surrendering to sleep almost as abruptly as his head at the pillow. Chapter 3 Finding a Friend The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. I finished jarring a mess of jam last night. Uh-huh. So that'll need to get delivered into town today. Okay. So, what did you and Rolo get up to yesterday? Uh, nothing interesting. Hello? Calm down. No, of course it was the right thing to do. Start gathering, folks. I'll be right there. Are you sure there isn't anything you want to tell me about yesterday? Anything I wanted to tell you? Not really, we just sort of ran around a bit. Gran's brow furrowed. She let out a long sigh. Her voice was quiet and even. I have to go take care of something. You are to stay in this house for the day. Under no circumstances are you to leave. What? If I am not back by dinner, there's stew in the icebox. But, but nothing. You are to stay here. Understood? Yeah. Say it. I'll stay here till you get back. Good. <laughs> oh, and Luca, you left the icebox open yesterday. We're not made of money, you know. I did not. Achievement unlocked, born in a barn. Well, that was strange. Luca was desperate to check in with Rolo. Until Gran returned, he was trapped. Oh, right, walkie talkies. An eerie electronic sound echoed from Luca's bedroom. Hello? Is anyone there? Hello? Rolo, is that you? I, I guess. Over? That's so cute! Luca glanced at the now silent walkie talkie. He wasn't sure what to think. Okay. I was hoping to take that with me. Oh, hey, Roxy. If this is about me uh, accidentally kicking you yesterday, is Rolo here? No. Look at me, Luca. This is serious. Is Rolo here? No, I haven't seen him since yesterday. No, I think he was just making a silly face because it was meant to be strange and upside down is strange. Because none of the other ones have looked like tarot cards. Rolo didn't come home last night. Also, she has winged eyeliner and I love it. What? A pit formed in Luca's stomach. Where was the last place you saw him? Oh, uh, we were playing around... In Weep Wood, and then it was late and we went home. Weep Wood? If he's alive, I'm going to kill that little creep. Is there anything else? Anything he said? Luca's mouth felt dry. No. We were just messing around. Okay. 
You need to go let people know to check the woods. You just stay out of trouble. Go see if he's hiding in the library or something. Luca could feel his heart beating in his throat. Rolo? Where are you? Time to disobey. Or I guess obey, but differently. The road leading to Beacon Pines was long and uninspiring. A sort of natural barrier for the impatient. Okay, you get me, game. You get me. I'll give you that. Hey, Bert. Have you seen Rolo? Nope. Well, I must have been talking to clipboards. They're setting up lots of stuff for the festival. This one said he had to process some answers. I told him that was fine. I'll wait right here until he gets back. I guess I should ask everybody. No. Did they put boxes in front of him? Howdy, Luca. Hello again, Pete. I'm not Pete, you silly goose. It's Toby. Could have fooled me. Well, hey, it's no problemo. The important thing is we'd love to hear your thoughts. I'm getting that impression. We're all a part of something special, Luca. And it all starts right here in Beacon Pines. I got it. Toby looked up from the clipboard excitedly. That's right. So how will you start by telling me? Look, no offense, but I've got my own stuff to take care of. Ah, oh, you joker. We're all a part of this together. You'll let us know when you're free to answer a few more questions. We really need to get back to work. Just a couple more minutes. If Roxy said she'll be here, then she'll be here. I just don't see why I'm standing around doing nothing and waiting for Roxy when I could be standing around doing nothing and getting paid for it. Come on, Lumi. Roxy needs our help. Ugh, my parents won't listen. No offense, but isn't Rolo always getting into trouble? Something feels different this time. What can we do to help? We need to check where the adults aren't. So I guess it's up to us to check we would. Our ship doesn't end for another couple hours. We could spend the time making posters. That would be great. I guess. Right. Fitz and I will check, check Weepwood. We'll be back later to pick up the posters. I think my dad has a map of Weepwood. Let's swing by my house and grab it before we head out. Do I get to play as Roxy? this about a missing child i must stress that the situation is completely under control it just all seems so terrible and you're sure there's nothing we can do to help nonsense young mr cotter will turn up safe and sound i'm certain i think this whoever wrote this uses more commas than i do and that is saying something <laughs> you're just focused on settling in i trust my sister has supplied you with suitable lodging oh yes miss valentine has been more than accommodating we were just telling our daughter back that- Oh my god, they're a couple! Now, where did she went off to? Also, how in the hell does reproduction work? Because she's a chipmunk, and the other lady, I don't know, kind of looks like a bear. But I know that Beck is a cat. His eyes went wide in disbelief. What do you mean vanish? That's impossible. Oh my... He doesn't even see the danger he's in. Ooh. Sharper Valentine, a celebration of excellence. Oh no. We all know Beacon Pines is a great town. What you might not know is great towns grow from mighty roots. And that is why you cannot tell the story of Beacon Pines without telling the story of one Sharper Valentine. Young Sharper's keen intellect and strong moral fiber led to a grand vision. A vision of a community dedicated to a better tomorrow. In his own words, a better tomorrow is within our grasp, but it requires a singular mind to harness it. Luckily for all of us, he decided to grow that vision here in Beacon Pines. And how does one grow a better tomorrow? With fertilizer, of course. Valentine's fertilizer company became the lifeblood of a town yearning for purpose. But then tragedy struck. 
a scientific experiment gone wrong, an accident which took Sharper away from us far too soon. To this day, we struggle to pick up the pieces. But one foul harvest isn't enough to stop the people of Beacon Pines. The spirit of Sharper Valentine lives on. Lives in the hearts of everyone with a dream for a better tomorrow. <laughs> Together we'll follow his future and grow a bountiful future. Paid for by the Valentine family and the Valentine Fertilizer Company Remembrance Fund. Yeah, I think it's town propaganda, but I love that he was pissing seeds. That was... Unhelpful. Hey, Eason. History Museum. It's laughable, really. Did you happen to see Rolo in there? No, just a shadow of family clinging on to a town, clinging on to the past. Feel free to check for yourself, but don't expect to have your mind blown. Hey, Griffin's Rolo been by? Haven't seen him all day. I'm sure he'll show up safe and sound, and when he does, Tell him there's a strawberry chocolate double scoop cone waiting for him. On the house. I like that. That's a fancy ice cream place to have in what is apparently a dying town. I was expecting like those shitty Spongebob things that are in the ice cream trucks. Okay, he said we should check the library, which is here. Oh, the cobs I've eaten. A salad-centric travel guide for the mildly adventurous. Yuck. Sally Seashores. Simple succulent sundries. Luca brushed off a smudge of dust, or maybe it was flour. 30 recipes so easy you'll doubt it's even edible. Oh, I thought it was going to be plants. A peek behind the curtain. The methods and ruminations of Patrick C. Montesquieu. One of the greatest acting minds of our time. By Patrick C. Montesquieu. Oop. New additions. There were rarely any actual new additions. Simply a variety of existing content rotated into the front display each week. Not fooling anyone. Kado volunteered at the library during the summers. He wasn't very social, so he dedicated each summer to becoming an expert in a single subject making him a reliable source of very particular knowledge. If you were to ask, is it Kado or Kado? I'm gonna say Kado. Something he didn't know. He'd escape into the dusty old bookshelves and return with just the right thing. Hey Kado. Kado was lost in his reading. Luca crooked his neck to see the title. Introduction to Melodology. <clears throat> oh hey Luca, you snuck up on me. Why does, I don't like the penguin's hands. Why does he have hands and not wings? And why do they look humanoid? And I don't like that. Good book? Then I just started it. He gestured to the shelves. I'm really running out of books I haven't read at. So now it's on to the wonderful world of bees. Turns out bees are pretty cool. For instance, did you know that around 70% of bee species actually live in underground tunnels? Or that if there are two queens in a hive, they'll fight to the death for supremacy? That's interesting, but you haven't seen Rolo around recently, have you? Not since yesterday. Keep an eye out for him, okay? Sure thing. If I see him, you'll be the first to know. Hey, Jace. Hey, Luca. Did Rolo come by? No. I was actually surprised. He's usually here early on days when a new edition drops. Or issue, I think it said. Rolo's the biggest Hank Atomic fan I know. Besides myself, that is. Oh, absolute foreshadowing. Well, if he does swing by, tell him to meet me you know where. I don't know where. No, he knows where. Ooh. Roger that, space cadet. Ooh, more books. Mycological phosphorescence. Uh, more like... My complete loss of interest. The bottom corner shelf was a dusty array of thick science books. Only one binding was clean enough to read. Cellular biology and the chemistry of mitosis. Boring. Okay, so maybe the scientists were looking at how to make plants reproduce asexually. The entire top level of the library was devoted to comics. 
most of which were Hank Atomic and the myriad of lesser revered spin-offs. How can you be complaining about your library if the entire top floor is comics? Come on. Achievement unlocked, nerd. You don't understand, game. I will click absolutely everything that there is to click. I need to know everything about this. Okay. What sort of monster puts candy behind a locked door? Oh yeah, Mr. Ninkreed works weird hours sometimes. Of course he does. How about you? When do I work? That's true. Maybe he just isn't... I don't know. Maybe he hasn't read enough spy novels because he's reading about the astronaut. No. What's your name? Luca Van Horn. You new here? Yep. Not by choice. Beck's family moved often, giving her little time to establish any real connections. She would tell you she prefers it that way. I'm looking for my friend Rolo. He didn't come home last night. So he's missing? I guess so? Like, missing missing? Does that sort of thing happen a lot around here? Luca shifted his feet uncomfortably. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Right? We've got an emote for her. So I should probably get going. Hey, wait up. What? Beck pulled a coin from her pocket. I'm coming with you. What? So says the unlucky penny. Unlucky? Yep. Well, technically it landed on heads. Leave this kid to find his friend alone. But I always do the opposite. Oh, that's kind of like me and Rolo. I guess Rolo's my unlucky penny. That settles it. A person should never be without their unlucky penny. Let's go find him. Name's Beck. Pleasure to meet you, Beck. I suppose I could use some help. Try to keep up. Does this town not have a police department? Not even like one single donut eating cop? Did I miss something with the name Beck? Joey, have you seen Rolo around? No, sorry. I've had my eyes in the dirt looking for beetles. Can't seem to find any. He never came home last night. Do you think it's because it's been colder than normal? I don't see why that would have anything to do with Rolo. No, the beetles! Do you think the temperature confused their circadian rhythm or something? Who's to say? I'm no beetologist. Just keep an eye out for him, will ya? Of course! Um, I actually had wanted to go to their house, but... Uh... Dang, they boarded up the way in. Yeah, they're not a very good secret security science company if they just had a hole in their fence. Property of Valentine Fertilizer Company. Looks old. Also looks like a nuclear waste depository. Oh, you can't go in the puddle. Can I go around the puzzle? No. Luca felt a chill as he approached Beck. Her eyes were locked on the strange green liquid. The nearby grass was coated in a fine layer of frost. Uh, is this sort of thing normal around here? Cause puddles of glowing ooze are definitely not what I expected from this place. I have no idea what that stuff is. Well, the next obvious step is science. What does science suggest? Poke it with a stick! Luca watches Beck dip the broken tree branch into the goo. Beck's eyes widened as flowers grew from the dead wood. First small buds, which quickly bloomed into vibrant petals. What the? Cool. As quickly as they had grown, the flowers began to shrivel and turn gray. Beck dropped the stick with a grunt of disgust. Okay. So the science tells us this gunk is weird as hell. Uh, yeah, it seems dangerous. Hey, Tish, look at what the cat dragged in. Yup. I don't have time for this right now, Iggy. Aw, oh, don't say things like that. It'll hurt Tish's feelings. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ain't that right, Tish? Yep. She looks fine to me. Why, hello! I don't think we've been properly introduced. Iggy's the name. This is my compatriot, Tish. Yep. You've probably heard of us. Can't say that I have. I'll forgive you just this once, on account of you being new around here. Why would you hang out with this dud? Oh, he seems pretty alright. He, why do you have to be so... You. Has he even told you that his parents skipped out on him? Shut up. It's true, they got tired of having such a pathetic kid and left him. Iggy, I'm gonna say this one time. Don't talk about my family. <laughs> Look who's grown a background now that a girl's around. First his pops croaked, then his mom finally couldn't take it anymore and bounced. Iggy took a step towards Luca, his sneer lit by the glowing puddle. Beck could see tears welling in Luca's eyes, his fist clenched. Some things about Beacon Pines were very different from the city, but a bully from a hasty town is really no different from a city bully. Beck took a deep breath and thought, well, time to bust out the... I remember that one of these options pushes him into a puddle and then he grows flowers everywhere and possibly dies. I don't remember which one it is. I just like this emote, so... Alright, Luca, looks like you need a little mud bath. What's wrong with you, new kid? We're about to pound your friend. Beck stared in silence, the only sign of life being the twitch of an eye. It's weird when people don't talk. Yep. Stop being a weirdo. Uh, hello? Are you some kind of wackadoo? Makes sense, wackadoos travel in packs, eh, dud? At the sight of Iggy talking to Beck, something in Luca snapped. Iggy smirked smirk shifted to a look of shock as Luca launched himself. This is the one- okay. Iggy's clothes were drenched in the glowing ooze. You jerk! My clothes are ruined! I'm gonna- Iggy's voice began to slur as he struggled to get up. Ah, uh, I don't feel so good. Hell? I'm sorry, I just- Oh, shit! Yup! Okay, so that aged him. I feel a bit bad about that, so... No, we're not back. I wanted to... Try the other one. Time to bust out the tickles. I don't hate this child enough to doom him to deadly mutation. Hey Tish, wanna see something cool? Yep. Check it. Beck lunged forward and began to tickle under Tish's arms. What the? Tish, is she tickling you? Yup. Hey yo. Hey yo. Yo, yo, yo. Tears began to form in Tish's eyes as she gasped for breath between gales of laughter. Yep, yep, yep. Beck redoubled her efforts until Tish had finally had enough. Yep. What just happened? She seems nice. Sorry for the interruption. I think you were just threatening us. Iggy's eye darted around in real a realization dawning on his face that he was now outnumbered. I just remembered. I have somewhere to be. Mm hmm. See you around, new kid. Iggy kicked at the puddle before making his escape. Okay, so he just really wants to be in this ooze. Whoa. What a little creep. Oh no, now she's gonna get it. Uh, I think you got a little ooze in your hair. Beck shook the ooze out of her hair as best she could. Is it bad? It depends. What are your feelings about having a more mature, refined look? Oh god. I mean, just getting a piece of your hair dyed isn't that bad. But I think we are going to wrap the stream up here on chapter 4 because I'm tired and I still have to work. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, 
Oh, apparently Twitch the payoff is now fifty dollars instead of a hundred, so maybe I'll actually see money. Shocking. Thanks for watching. Um I don't really see anyone to raid and I'm still too awkward to figure that out. So I think I'm just gonna leave it here. Maybe we'll make Wednesday's Beacon Pines Day. I thought that would be kind of fun. Uh, but until then, I will see you next time and thanks for hanging out.